Um, Prime, Prime Minister, what's your thoughts and views on Tonga's future? I'm very positive about the future of Tonga. I think that before the King died he made some very important changes with the appointment of the first commoner as Prime Minister and that paves the way for more meritocratic uh, government, uh, people coming into uh, jobs on their ability and then the whole constitutional reform process has quite a head of steam. So I'm optimistic for Tonga's future. It was suggested that today's turnout was relatively low um, given past traditions. What do you think of that? It's hard for me to judge because I was a schoolgirl in New Zealand at the time of Queen Salote's uh, funeral, but sh for sure Tonga will have changed immensely in the last uh, 41 years. Uh, the last year has been an extraordinarily difficult one for Tonga. There's been enormous uh, division in Tonga. And I think now there's an opportunity to move ahead. There is a new Prime Minister, there is a will to change, I believe, and we will support that however we can. Prime Minister, is New Zealand playing a role in Tonga's future relating to constitutional reform? We have an aid prog program with Tonga and we're always uh, happy to help on better governance, uh, human rights issues, as well as putting a lot of effort into basic education. So if there's a bigger role we can play, we're very happy. Tell us about the dinner you're having with the new king tonight. There's a dinner with the new king and with the other heads of government and heads of state and dignitaries who've come tonight. So that will be an opportunity to meet him again. I haven't met him for quite a number of years. Uh, we first met in this very house 22 years ago <laughs> when I came to stay with the High Commissioner for a week and had a conversation then and I've met him in New Zealand but not for quite a lot of years. Mm. Listening to some people that were um, um, you know, lining the side of the road mm. funeral, he went past and some of them had said that he was maybe too British to be Tongan. What do you think mm. of, of that comment? They were, they, they were from commoners that were lining the road as he drove past. He will have his own style but I get the sense that he is likely to stand back and let Dr Fred Savelli and the government move on to do what has to be done in Tonga. As I said, these are very difficult times. 170 teachers have been made redundant in the past year, 30 educational administrators. Class sizes are huge. You've got a young and growing population. So there's some big issues to deal with here in Tonga, and it's going to need a strong hand in the government to do that. What kind of time frames would you envisage change uh, taking place in? I think Tonga will do it at its own pace. Tonga has its own ways of working. They don't perhaps go at things like a bull of a gate, as a country like New Zealand might. Uh, they're very conscious of tradition and evolving from that. But I think we're going to see steady change. You were saying the mood was very calm today. Do you think it could be the calm before the storm? Maybe? I, I hope not. I think there has been a storm, a storm with the public service strike, the great division over that. Uh, then after the settlement, of course, uh, the Tongan government had to face up to how it could actually fund the settlement. Uh, that's leading to a lot of pain in the restructuring of the economy. There's work to do here and let's hope there's an open enough process uh, for that to happen in a way that Tongan people can see the sense of. Tongan's people are not normally allowed on this most sacred earth on the grass lawn surrounding the tomb. One told me, today is the exception, and we are told it is a privilege. There is the beginning of a clash of cultures here. Tonga has a large youth population. Its people have expectations of its government and of its new king. Their wants are as for all peoples, a better future for their children, for themselves. There are education challenges here. Health problems as a result of obesity is almost an island tradition. And to the tune of Danny Boy, the Tongan King's coffin was unfurled. There was security and there was nobility. 
there was respect for tradition and there was a moderate police presence and there was also the bizarre occasion of the new King George V arriving in his black London cab. Away from the royal tomb area, a bell tolled in Pacific time, punctuated by the resounding thud of distant cannon fire, and a cooling Pacific breeze breathed relief among the forever patient gathering. As the late Tongan king was carried onto the royal tomb's sacred ground, the slow agonising beat of the death march was played. Along with the late king, it appeared that a large proportion of the past was buried this week in Tonga. The state funeral was akin to a snapshot of Victorian England. It laid bare all the pomp and ceremony that seemed so alien to this coconut tree landscape and out of volcanic islands. One could not help but wonder that it may be not only the burial ceremony for the aged monarch taking place, but also a burial for this island state's monarchy. Local Tongans told me the new king is to them a most peculiar monarch. He is very English, more Balangi than Tongan. He speaks with a different accent. He likes Western things, appears to have abandoned the finer points of many old Tongan traditions. Perhaps his estrangement will lead to a peaceful Passover of power to the Tongan government. Today there is talk in Tonga about giving him a time to settle in, a time to think, and then to let constitutional reform take hold. But if he does not, who will the soldiers protect? The old monarchy or the mass weight of public opinion? The new Tongan king leaves his father's funeral. He waves. He waves to the crowd again. But nobody waves back. Nobody cheers. Nobody is sobbing. Nobody appears to be in grief. I feel it was a privilege to come today. It was an extraordinary ceremony. It was both elaborate and simple and very, very dignified. And the memory I'll go away with was how quiet it was. Mm. Just very, very quiet, incredibly well-behaved school children, respectful adults. It was really a beautiful ceremony. 